Hello students, today I will be discussing the biochemistry of chronic granulomatous disease. You know I was reading chronic granulomatous disease in uh, I mean from Wikipedia only and you can see it has got a lovely detail about the disease per se, why does it happen, what are the symptoms and signs, who actually can infect you, genetics, pathophysiology. But in actually the pathophysiology section, it is absolutely clearly not explained. So, in order to understand uh, what is happening in CGD or chronic granulomatous disease, you need to understand the normal physiology and the normal physiology being the oxygen is being converted to superoxide radical or O2 minus by the enzyme NADPH oxidase. All right. Thereafter, what happens? There is an enzyme that is superoxide dismutase or SOD. It converts uh, superoxide to H2O2 and thereafter it is being acted upon by uh, an enzyme that is myeloperoxidase or MPO a chloride ion comes a Cl okay and it is converted to HOCl or bleach this HOCl is the predominant or uh, what can I say free radical that or a compound that actually attacks and kills the bacteria so we need this HOCl production at all costs and for that we need NADPH oxidase activity we need superoxide dismutase activity we need myeloperoxidase activity this step is actually known as the respiratory burst where oxygen is converted to O2 minus free radical okay this is known as respiratory burst in chronic granulomatous disease as you might be knowing this NADPH oxidase enzyme is deficient therefore in normal circumstances we need all the three we need NADPH oxidase we need superoxide dismutase we need MPO for activity all right however consider the case where uh, NADPH oxidase is deficient that happens in chronic granulomatous disease <clears throat> the downstream processes will not happen means there is no generation of H2O2 there is no generation of HOCl however very important is this is the expansion that is not given in any standard textbook at undergraduate level however bacteria do have some H2O2 all right so what do we do we take the bacterial hydrogen peroxide and the host myeloperoxidase can take the bacterial H2O2 and then convert it into HOCl or bleach and then this can kill the bacteria. However, in certain bacteria for example E. coli, Staphylococcus, uh, Micrococcus, um, Listeria, H. pylori, I mean there are multiple catalyst positive organisms, right? Uh, the end list is endless I am just giving you some uh, common options so what they have they have got an enzyme catalase so these catalase positive organisms what do they do as soon as the bacteria produces H2O2 these catalase destroys the bacterial H2O2 and we don't have any bacterial H2O2 to start with therefore in these catalase positive organisms when the catalase positive organism infect uh, a patient who has got NADPH oxidase deficiency there is no H2O2 from the host source neither there is any H2O2 from the bacterial source therefore there is no production of HOCl and therefore only catalase positive organisms are prone to infect or these uh, person or these patients or these patients are prone to be infected by catalyst positive organisms in most textbooks you will find uh, NADPH oxidase is deficient and the bacterial catalyst positive organism destroys the H host H2O2 absolutely not all right so mind it catalyst positive organism destroy their own H2O2 and there is no H2O2 available for host myeloperoxidase to act and produce HOCl this is the key concept why chronic granulomatous disease patients get infected by catalyst positive organisms and there is one more important biochemistry over here that is uh, this reaction is uh, important for uh, converting a chemical that is known as NBT or nitroblue tetrazoleum 
to blue color and we need this superoxide radical however since nadph oxidase deficient the respiratory burst cannot occur this nbt cannot be converted to blue so nbt test is negative there is no blue color so these are the two hallmark biochemical phenomena that is going on with chronic granulomatous disease that you should understand and the rest you can uh, get knowledge from any website nowadays because there is a lot of learning material what gene is deficient what organism there are a list of catalyst positive organisms you say told uh, so many I, there are so many more so you can go through this but you should remember if you are studying the biochemistry that is the most high yield point of origin chronic granulomatous disease you should remember the concept of the story lies with deficiency of bacterial h2o2 which the host mpo cannot act upon as the host h2o2 is previously deficient with deficiency of nadph oxidase so that's it